Conqueror of the Aztecs, Hernan Cortes, by Jesse Silvey, live science contributor, on September 28, 2017. Paragraph 1. Hernan Cortes was a Spanish conquistador, or conqueror, best remembered for conquering the Aztec Empire in 1521 and claiming Mexico for Spain. Paragraph 2. Like many explorers we know about today, Hernan, also known as Hernando, Cortez's role in the age of exploration was influential but controversial, said Erica Cosme, administrative coordinator of education and digital services at the Mariners Museum and Park in Newport News, Virginia. He was a smart, ambitious man who wanted to conquer new land for the Spanish crown convert native inhabitants to Catholicism, and plunge the lands for gold and riches. Early Life, Paragraph 3 Cortes was born in 1485 in Medellin, Spain. He was the only son of noble, though not wealthy, parents. At age 14, Cortes was sent to study law at the University of Salamanca, but he was restless and unhappy. He became fascinated with the tales of Christopher Columbus's New World Explorations. Paragraph 4. Cortez was eager to be part of the exploration of the New World, the Americas. He decided to seek fortune and adventure in Hispaniola, modern-day Dominican Republic, Haiti. In 1504, at age 19, Cortez set sail for the New World. Years later, Cortes set sail towards Mexico with 11 ships and more than 500 men. Arrival in Mexico, paragraph 5. In 1519, Cortes's ships reached the Mexican coast at Yucatan. Mexico had been discovered by the Spanish just a year prior, and they were eager to settle it. Cortez was also interested in converting natives to Christianity. His views on the indigenous people were similar to the majority of Europeans of that day. They felt indigenous people were inferior culturally, technologi technologically, and religiously, said Cosme. While in Cozumel, he and his men removed and destroyed the pagan idols and replace them with crosses and figures of the Virgin Mary. Paragraph 6. Cortez was met with resistance from natives. He quickly overpowered them, and the natives surrendered. They provided the Europeans with food, supplies, and 20 women, including an interpreter called Melitin, also known as La Malanche, or Donna Mariana. La Malanche became an important figure in Cortez's life and legacy. Cortez and La Malinche had a child together named Martin, who is sometimes called El Mestizo. He was one of the first children of mixed indigenous and Spanish heritage. Conquering the Aztecs, paragraph 7. Cortez had heard that of the Aztecs and knew that they and their leader, Montezuma II, were a primary force in Mexico. He arrived in the great Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan in 1519, said Cosme. Although he was kindly received by the Aztec emperor Montezuma, Cortez's intentions were less than benevolent. He set out to rule them. Paragraph 8. Cortez didn't realize that his arrival coincided with an important Aztec prophecy. The Aztec god Quinzentical, whom they credited with the creation of humans, among other notable feats, was set to return to Earth. Thinking that Cortez could be Quinzentical, Montezuma greeted the party with great honor. Paragraph 9. Montezuma set out envoys to meet the conquistador as he neared. The Aztecs were fascinated by the Spaniards' light skin and the sight of men on horseback, which they described as beasts with two heads and six legs. The Spanish fired shots, 
which stunned the natives and further intimidated them. Paragraph 10. Cortez entered the city, sacked it, and took Montezuma hostage. The Spanish army had help in sacking the city. Though Cortez enslaved much of the native population, other indigenous groups were fundamental to his success. The Aztecs were not always popular rulers among their subjected cities. When Cortez learned of this, he was able to use this to his advantage, said Cosme. While the Spaniards still had superior weaponry, cannons, guns, and swords, the additional men and support gave Cortez a helpful edge. The Fall of Tenochtitlan Paragraph 11 Then a smallpox academic spread in Tenochtitlan. The disease spread like wildfire because the Aztec people had no immunity to it. More than three million Aztecs died from smallpox, and with such a severely weakened population, it was easy for the Spanish to take control of their city, Tenochtitlan. Paragraph 12. It is uncertain how Montezuma died. Some scholars state that, disgusted with him, the Aztecs stoned him to death. Others, including indigenous scholars, assert that the Spanish killed him. Paragraph 13. Once the city had fallen, Cortes began building Mexico City on the ruins. It quickly became a permanent city in the Spanish colonies, and many Europeans came to live there. As a result of his success, King Charles I of Spain appointed Cortes governor of New Spain. Legacy Paragraph 14 Cortes is a controversial figure, especially in Mexico, because of his treatment of natives. Unfortunately, when it came to indigenous people, Cortes was not unique in his treatment and mindset, said Cosme. He enslaved much of the native population, and many of the indigenous people were wiped out from European diseases such as smallpox. Both scenarios would unfortunately become a common theme among many explorers' interactions with natives. Paragraph 15. Cortez was, nevertheless, important in reshaping of the world. Cortez's victory secured new and profitable land and opportunities for the Spanish monarch. He helped oversee the building of Mexico City, which is still Mexico's capital today, said Cosme. He opened the door for further exploration and conquest of Central America and North America. <laughs>